हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस विद यू अबाउट क्लिनिकल गवर्नेंस दिस इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉक स्टेशन आई ट्राई टू मेक इट सिंपल एंड इजी फॉर यू सो व्हाट इज क्लिनिकल गवर्नेंस द डेफिनेशन इज क्लिनिकल गवर्नेंस मे बी डिफाइंड एज द फ्रेमवर्क थ्रू विच हेल्थ केयर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन आर अकाउंटेबल फॉर कंटिन्यूसली इम्प्रूविंग द क्वालिटी ऑफ देयर सर्विसेज and safeguarding high quality of care in order to have better understanding for clinical governance we should know what is meant by governance so governance can be defined as the system by which entities for example organizations are directed and controlled so clinical governance encompasses a range of activities in which clinician should become involved in order to maintain and improve the quality of care they provide to patients and to ensure full accountability of the system to patients it means there must be some system to which healthcare organizations are accountable for what they do so that system is basically clinical governance there are seven pillars of clinical governance they are clinical effectiveness and research audit risk management education and training these four are more important than other three and you can remember this by the mnemonic care others are patient and public involvement using information and it and staffing and staff managements you can remember all these seven pillars with the mnemonic pirates now we will discuss all this one by one so in clinical effectiveness and research means ensuring that everything you do is designed to provide the best outcomes for patient in practice it means adopting an evidence based approach in the management of patients changing your practice developing new protocols or guidelines based on experience and evidence if current practice is shown inadequate and conducting research to develop the body of evidence available and therefore enhancing the level of care provided to patient in future second component is audit i have discussed audit in detail with example in my previous video please follow that video for better understanding uh, here i am just briefly described is the aim of the audit process is to ensure that clinical practice is continuously monitored and that deficiencies in relation to set standards of care are remedied uh, third is risk management so risk management involves monitor and minimize the risk to patients and staff and to learn from mistakes when things go wrong in the delivery of care doctors and other clinical staff should feel safe admitting it and be able to learn and share what they have learned this includes complying with protocols for example hand washing discarding sharps identifying patients correctly etc and learning from mistakes reporting any significant adverse event while critical incidents forms looking closely at complaints assessing the risk identified for their probability of occurrence and the impact they could have if an incident did occur implementing process to reduce the risk and its impact now promoting a blame free culture to encourage everyone to report problems and mistakes uh, next is education and training this entails providing appropriate support available to enable staff to be competent in doing their jobs and to develop their skills so that they are up to date professional development needs to continue through lifelong learning in practice for doctors this involves attending courses and conferences commonly referred to as cpd which is continuous professional development taking relevant exams regular assessment designed to ensure that 
training is appropriate appraisals which are a mean of identifying and discussing weaknesses and opportunities for personal development next is patient and public involvement uh this is about ensuring that services provided suits patients that patients and public feedback is used to improve services into day to day practice this is being implemented through a number of initiatives and organizations now the next is using information and it this aspect of clinical governance is about ensuring that patient data is accurate and up to date confidentiality of patient data is respected full and appropriate use of the data is made to measure quality of outcomes for example through audits and to develop services tailored to local needs next step is staffing and staff management this relates to need for appropriate recruitments and management of staff ensuring that underperformance is identified and addressed encouraging staff retention by motivating and developing staff providing good working conditions now something related to governance structure now governance structure each network has local steering groups or boards that feed into regional and national governance processes and through local stp governance infrastructure now this diagram shows uh, clinical governance and its component which i i already discussed now stakeholders system and process and cpd they are involved and they make sure that all the things are going smoothly and check for accountability and transparency their main motive is learning and sharing improving quality of care and excellent outcome thanks for watching if you like my video please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon for more updates